Hello friends. So it has gotten to the point in the year where I have read 99 books, exactly. <laughs> and I wanted to think of a fun way to pick my 100th book of the year and I thought, let me just give the power to you. So what I did was I made a poll with some of the books I was most excited to read this year. It had some books that had been on like my 2023 TBR, some new releases I haven't gotten round to yet that I really wanted to read, some books that were my 24 books read before I turn 24 TBR. So books that I've been meaning to get round to and haven't got round to yet. And I gave you the power to pick my 100th book. And I told you, listen, it needs to be five stars. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. Because I feel like I need a five star right now. I'm in desperate need of a five star. I've had 11 five stars this year. And frankly, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Because like, not even all of them are like iconic, like five stars, five stars of all time. You know what I mean? <sighs> Stressing me out even just thinking about it. So I gave you power to choose what my 100th book of the year should be. And we're going to read it in this vlog. Over 1,400 of you voted. So I feel like we've got a pretty good sample size, okay? And the winner, oh my God, oh my God. Are we ready? <laughs> my 100th book of the year, and definitely a five star, is <laughs> going to be Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! What? For some reason, guys, I've been a little bit intimidated about reading this book. I've been putting it off. You guys know I love Ninth House. I love, love, love Ninth House. It was a five star for me. I adore it. It is up there. It's, I reckon it was in my 25 favorite books of all time video. I'm pretty sure. If you're curious, the closest runner up, this had 389 votes. The closest runner up had 302. And that was the only one left by Riley Sager, which I also would have been very happy to read, but it didn't win. Hellbent won. So yeah, this is the sequel to Ninth House. We're following Alex Stern as she goes. Is it Harvard? I never remember my American. <laughs> no, it's Yale. <laughs> she's at Yale and she's kind of in charge of looking after the secret societies there. Now, I am going to make this video non-spoilery for both this and Ninth House. I'm going to try not to spoil anything that happens in Ninth House. I'm going to read a Ninth House recap. <laughs> and I'm going to try really hard not to spoil Ninth House, okay? So you should be fine to watch this even if you have not read Ninth House. But I'm very excited. I feel like you've made a good decision here. I feel like I'm finally gonna get around to it. I can't put it off any longer. I mean, I waited like four years, three years for this book and now, now it has to happen. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna go read a recap because it has been about four years since I read Ninth House. And then we'll just get to it. I'm gonna go sit out in the garden, have a read. I will check in with you probably around every 100 pages or so. But yeah, I'm, I'm nervous, but I think you probably have made the right decision. I'm having a bit of a costochondritis flare up and my gland, can you see I'm swollen here? Can you see that? It's so painful. So I might just sit like this. My body really likes to tell me when like, I'm too stressed. I'm over just, I'm just like stressing about life. It's like, mm, yeah, get a grip, get a grip girl, get a grip. <laughs> it's been an evening. It's been a day, it's been an evening reading this book, okay? <laughs> I've <laughs> been through it. I'm 100 pages in, exactly. I'm on page 100. All you need to know about this book is that we're back with Alex at Yale. That's literally all I'm gonna tell you, okay? I have been through it with this book because I have been very, oh my gland is really throbbing. <laughs> That's disgusting. I'm blocking you. How do I block somebody on this thing? I have been too anxious to read this book for the whole year. I have felt so much 
pressure around this because I love Ninth House so much and it has been so long since I read Ninth House and I know myself and I know I'm probably not going to reread Ninth House before I read this like I know I'm not going to do that I'm not going to do that I'm I'm probably not going to do that that's not really me okay is this on back to front no we're fine it's chaos <laughs> so the first 50 pages of this I was panicking oh I should have reread Ninth House oh I'm not gonna like it as much oh I'm not vibing with it oh there's something about the writing that I'm not vibing with oh it's not instantly hooking me oh I'm 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 shitting bricks <laughs> but there's this moment I want to say 60 70 pages in if you know you know if you know you know and I, it's been a long time since the book has made me laugh out loud like that. Like, shocked laugh. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. It's taken me, it took me those first 60, 70 pages to like get into it. But once that moment happened, if you know, you know. I was like, right, I'm on board. <laughs> Oh, that could be very, that could be con- I was just like, you know, when people are like, is that when they're getting ready to fight? They spit in their hands? I don't actually know what that's- from. That could be really misconstrued. I didn't mean it like that. Okay. Okay, moving on. Can you stop insinuating things, please? <laughs> I, I'm just falling back in love with the story. I'm, there's something about Alex Stern that's very, she's a very interesting character. I got a bit nervous also when reading this because I recently read this year, Book of Night by Holly Black, which was a one star. I think I maybe I gave it 1.5, it's a one, you know? And Book of Night really felt like a rip off of Ninth House. And because I read that more recently, there were things happening. I was like, oh, it reminds me of Book of Night. Oh, that really reminds me of Book of Night. And I was very nervous about <laughs> I was very, because I was like, it's going to make me think of Book of Night, which is negative connotations. We don't want negative connotations. But we've expelled that. Alex is a very interesting main character. If you haven't read Ninth House, she's very, like, mm, very dry sense of humour. She's been through a lot. Like, she's been through more than most people have. She's got a very troubled history. And she's kind of like... If okay, here's the thing. I want you guys to know. <laughs> I have not. I've been speaking for too long, but I don't want to stop. I I have only watched the first three seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay. What does that have to do with anything, bitch? Me and Tom, we started season four. We've stopped watching. Maybe we'll start again soon in spooky season. I feel like because at the moment we're just rewatching old episodes of Ghost Files from Watcher over and over again. And it's a problem. That's all we're watching at the moment. <laughs> But my parents loved it growing up, Buffy and Angel, and I always wanted to watch it. And they wouldn't let me, but they'd let me watch one episode of Buffy. They'd let me watch Once More with Feeling. And so as like a four-year-old, <laughs> I was watching Once More with Feeling, which is the musical episode from Buffy. And like Alex Stern, she's like, I touch the fire and it freezes me. If you don't know, is it, do we, Buffy spoilers? Are Buffy spoilers okay? <laughs> been out like 20 years. Buffy's like recently died. D Buffy dies many times but in, to my knowledge, again I haven't watched the season I've only watched this episode. She's like recently died and been booked back to life she's not happy about it. She's like, should have left me dead babes. Should have left me fucking dead. <laughs> That's what's going on there and Alex reminds me of that kind of coldness almost of Buffy but with a bit more humour Buffy's kind of like deadpan in that she's like, you know um, what about the bunnies guys? Anyways, no I think this night's mostly filler. Oh, you don't understand how much I love Once More With Feeling. I used to put it on CDs and take it into school. The songs from Once More With Feeling. My mom was like, Megan, you can't play that one. And I didn't realise it's because, uh, what's the name, Spike said bitch in it. <laughs> so yes, I've all that to say. <laughs> it's very roundabout what I'm saying. I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm ready to go. It is, it's like 10 o'clock, but I'm going to read some more tonight. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to read to page 200 and check in with you. We could be on the up. I feel like I'm very glad that the story has gone where it's gone already, because if you've read it, you know that the thing that I've been referring to could have been dragged out, right? That could have been the whole book. If, if this had been seven books like Lee once said it has, which I still mourn, like gone but not forgotten. But perhaps she would have dragged that out for a whole book and I don't think that would have worked. I needed that to happen to sustain me <laughs> and to get into it. So I'm gonna go carry on. I'm finally reviving. I think this line's mostly filler. Um, <laughs> maybe I need to go watch Once More is Feeling. No, no. <laughs> They got the mustard, and they got the mustard. 
<laughs> okay, next time I see you, it will be to talk to you about something that I am very, very excited to share. So this video is very kindly sponsored by Proven Skincare, which I have been testing and trying out for two, I think almost three weeks now, and I'm obsessed. Proven Skincare is the world's most personalized skincare. It's so cool, guys. <laughs> It's so cool. So you do a quiz when you first like sign up, you're like, I wanna try it out. You do a quiz and the quiz takes into account 47 factors that affect your skin. So it's things like your personal skin concerns, your lifestyle, the water hardness in the area you live, the humidity, the UV index, and they take that all into account. It's no other skincare can do that. <laughs> that is perfect for you. And the thing that I think is best about Proven Skincare is that it's so simple. You only have three products and they're like the core products that you need. So you have a custom cleanser. I've been finding this has been a really gentle cleanser. Sometimes I've had problems with cleansers being too stripping on the skin um, and making my skin feel even more dried out. But this has been feeling really gentle and my skin has just been feeling a bit rejuvenated when I use it. Should I do like a classic like skincare, like, you know, with the walls? <laughs> like those commercials that you had back in the 2000s where it's like, Then you have the custom moisturizer and SPF in one. This has SPF 50, SPF 50, <laughs> which is great. I always look for like at least SPF 40. So the fact that this is a moisturizer with SPF 50 is great. You also have a custom night cream, which is also great for just more intense moisture. So for me personally, I, when I was taking this quiz, I was like, sort out my dryness, please. <laughs> Because it's something I've really been struggling with. I've always struggled with dry skin. I didn't know that oily skin was a thing until I was like 13. Like I've always had very, very dry skin and I've had some flare ups of some dry spots. Another problem for me is that I, as someone who's been interested in skincare, I have spent so much money trying out so many different products, hoping that they will work for me. Whereas with this, because it is personalized to you, it's so simple. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to stress about like, should I try that moisturizer? Should I try that cleanser? It takes that out of the equation for you. And I especially also have very sensitive skin. I cannot tell you the amount of times I have bought like a mask, a moisturizer, an eye cream or whatever, and they irritate my skin. I go really red. I get very irritated skin very easily. I have wasted so much money on products that I have only used once and then I've had to like bin or like give to someone in my family because it just doesn't work for me. But because I put all that information in, this is just really lovely ingredients. It makes my skin feel great. It does not irritate my skin at all. I feel like since I've been using it, I've been using it for about two, almost three weeks now, two and a half weeks. And I have noticed that my dryness has improved. I feel like my skin feels a lot plumper. I keep going like that. <laughs> Because I feel like my skin has like this bounce to it that it didn't have before. I have been loving using it, guys. I just think this is incredible. I cannot recommend it enough. If you're someone who gets overwhelmed with how much skincare is out there nowadays, I think this is perfect because it really makes it for you. For you! <laughs> if you're like, Megan, you've broken out. This is an under the skin spot that I get when I'm stressed. I always get it in the same spot and I'm stressed. <laughs> so I, sometimes this just flares up. So that is nothing to do with skincare. It's just cause I'm stressed. It makes the whole process a lot simpler because I get overwhelmed as well, worrying about like, should I be using a toner? Should I be using like an essence? Should I be using, like there's so many things out there and this really simplifies it for me. So I've taken some before and after photos so you guys can see. I took it in the same shirt even, <laughs> the before and after. It's cause color theory is a thing guys that can make different shirts, different colors can make you look different. Um, So yeah, these are my before before and after and I just feel like you can see that my skin has a little bit more glow to it in the after a little bit I mean I've only been using it for two weeks really so I'm expecting to see more changes as time goes on so it's very exciting you guys can get $20 off your three-step personalized skincare routine from Proven for a limited time with my code MEGWITHBOOKS so just go check out the link below type in the code MEGWITHBOOKS and you can get $20 off which is very exciting like I said I have been absolutely loving trying these out and I'm excited to keep using it. So yeah, make sure you go check out Proven down below. <sighs> Guys, it's hotter than hell in the UK right now. This is Satan's work. So hot and uncomfortable. And I also just started my period. So I'm just not feeling good. <laughs> So I'm getting very anxious about this book and how because I'm in a bad mood, it's not the right time to read this. And so I shouldn't be reading this right now. And I'm not gonna give it a five star because I'm not happy myself and I can't focus. <laughs> so the last like 50 pages of this, I'm up to page 200. 
they haven't been the most enjoyable, but I am really enjoying it. I need to just like get rid. I hate when I have these like anxieties. I'm already, gosh, I've been filming for 30 seconds and it's already too hot in here. I want to get rid of these anxieties. I always feel so much pressure when it's a book that I want to love to love it and I feel so much pressure to like read it in the right conditions, read it at the right time. I'm like, oh, because it's hot and summery, it's not like yaily October, autumn leaves falling, I'm not, this isn't the perfect time to read this. Get over yourself, Megan, get over yourself. I've always said I love reading books, like a snowy book in the summertime. Like I really do enjoy reading books like at the complete opposite of the seasons that they're set in, but <sighs> I feel like my mood and my emotions are getting in the way of me enjoying this book as much as I could, which is very upsetting. But it has elicited some gasps and gags from me. I, I am really enjoying it. I just need to get rid of these emotions. I I'm crying mentally. I'm very emotional. It's making me anxious, the heat. Usually I love the heat, but I think because I'm not in a good mood in myself and not in like, you know, I'm not feeling very well. It's not making me very happy. <laughs> yeah, there's something just happened in the last chapter. We had an introduction of a new kind of magic, let's say. But something that I don't believe that we had been introduced yet to existing in the world that Lee Bodega has created. And I was like, wow, that slaps. It's kind of gag worthy. I don't know if it's gonna have like a big impact on the rest of the story, but I just like that it was thrown in there. I feel like I've now, like I've gotten back into the characters. I've gotten back into the vibe of the story. I just need to focus. I'm having a focusing issue today. I'm not focusing very well. <laughs> so I need to just get over that, but I am really enjoying it. I think I'm only gonna do two more check-ins. I'm gonna do one in between now and finishing it because there's, I'm on page 200. The book is about 470 pages and I'd have to read, there's not an easy check-in around page 300. I'd have to read to like page 320. So at that point I might as well just read a little bit more then check in, then finish it. But yeah, I am really enjoying it, but I just, it's one of those books. This is probably one of the books this year that I feel the most pressure around. I don't know why. I think also it's because I read Ninth House so long ago. It was four years ago. It was like one of the first videos I read on my channel. And I think because I read it so long ago, I really doubt how much this world, this writing, this story was gonna hold up for me, right? Like, sometimes I've reread stuff that really hit me in such a special way at the start of my reading journey that just don't hit the same way now. And so, I think I've been really anxious about that and that anxiety is just feeding into me not enjoying it as much. So I need to just let it go. I went back and actually I watched the video where I read 9,000. It was a shit vlog, but I mean, it was like my eighth video, so it's fine. <laughs> I didn't know how to talk to the camera yet, really. <laughs> and I have that anxiety about a lot of things. Like if I was to ever reread The Secret History or I don't know, there's loads of examples of stuff that I loved when I was first getting back into reading. And I feel like I'm just a lot of a lot more picky customer now. And so I feel so much anxiety around how is this gonna compare? You Clap if you have anxiety. <laughs> you know, reading the second book and the first book I haven't read in four years. So anyways, I'm gonna really try, I'm gonna do some editing now. I'm gonna edit this clip, okay? And then I'm gonna really try, the next time I speak to you, I'm gonna have gotten rid of that anxiety and I'm just gonna be a happy girl, okay? I'll see you this evening, hopefully. Hopefully I'll be less hot. Can you guys see, like, it's not pleasant. It's really, my room is a furnace. It's a furnace. It's, actually, does anyone know if books can make a room hotter? Is this like extra insulation? Let me know in the comments, please. <laughs> Cause maybe I just need to get rid of them all. <laughs> I'm about 320 pages into Hellbent. I was gonna read more tonight, but now I'm not sure if I'm gonna get any more read. So I thought I'd check in. I might get like another 20 pages read, but I thought I'd just check in. Um, Lee Bardugo. Lee Bardugo. We and you need to have a chat. We need to sit down and have a chat. Because why, <laughs> why <laughs> on God's green earth is Lee Bardugo fucking around writing the King of Scars trilogy when this exists. I'm so sorry. It's not adding up. But like, when you can craft this, when you can craft this, why are we fucking around with that? Why are we fucking around with that? Why? The Grishaverse, I think I'm done. Is that controversial? I'm ready for whatever she has next and I'm done with the Grishaverse. Yes, I know we're gonna have Six of Crows 3. But I say Six of Crows 3 because if you've read the King of Scars trilogy, you know that the worlds have become inextricably linked. You can't have Six of Crows without Shadow and Bone people. And I'm not here for that, to be honest. I liked it when they were separate. <laughs> 
Um, I'm really enjoying it. Perhaps it's fitting that it's so hot. If you've read the book, they're going through it. They're going through it. This is a very different beast to Ninth House. Ninth House, I think I preferred the plot and the pacing of Ninth House a little bit. It's got more of that academia vibes. We kind of are eschewing that a little bit in this one. But I love the developments and how the world is growing and new additions, the world is expanding, the magic is expanding. That's something I always say that I love in my fantasy. I don't, I really get annoyed at fantasy where they just dump everything in the first book, like all the world building, all of the rules, all the magic system. And you know, Alex is obviously new to this magic system. And so I like that things about you know, how this world works. I mean, it's our world, but you know, how this world works are slowly being revealed. And I really liked how that's been expanded upon in this book. Um, is it gonna be a five? I feel like I've forgotten what a five star is, to be quite honest with you. Like, I've been giving so many books 4.5 all of a sudden, which I never do. And I've been having very little five stars this year. I just think I've forgotten what a five star is. Like it's Legends and Lattes or it's not a five star. This yes. is a concern and a worry. <laughs> Am I ever going to have five stars ever again? It's going to be all four or five. There are moments where I think this is a five. There's moments where I think it's not quite that. But is that the pressure talking? I don't know. I don't know. It could get a five. If the ending fucking turns it out, it could get a five. It could also get a four. I don't quite know at the moment, if I'm honest with you. I'm really enjoying it and I'm excited to see where it's gonna go. And I think these characters are great. I'm really loving the group of characters we've got at the moment. I'm just, I've really gotten into it since I last checked in with you, like it happened. I like all my doubts kind of went away, but I still, the my issue with whether it's a five star is a large issue of my reading this year, not just this book. But I love the writing. I think the world that she has crafted is so impeccable. But that I'm just excited for everything outside the Grishaverse, to be honest. I'm done with it. Give me Six of Crows 3 and then let's put it to bed. I don't want any more Grishaverse, Lee. Like, it's incredible. Look at what you've done, but let's leave it in the past. Because this... You're telling me I could have had seven books of this? You're telling me I could have had seven books of this? And then we only get one more now. <sighs> I'm begging you. You could reconsider. You know that, Lee? You could reconsider. We could just make it a big old series again. You know? But I'm really enjoying it. I don't know if... I probably won't finish it tonight. We're gonna go out somewhere tomorrow. I don't know what the plan is. It's hot. Might go to the beach. Might go on a little walk somewhere. I don't know what the plan is. But I'm hoping I'll finish this either tomorrow or the next day. Um, but yes. Oh, it is so good. It's really good, guys. But is it a five? I don't know. <laughs> to think I'm the problem That I was way too sensitive React and way too much Until I realized <sighs> Okie dokie, everyone. <laughs> finished this last night. Finished Hellbent. And I'm gonna give it four stars. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say we all just lost a bit of respect for you there. I'm a bit sad about it, you know? I I don't want to spoil anything, so I don't, I'm not really going to talk in much detail about the ending, but I just did have some issues with the pacing. I felt like this last se section dragged a bit. However, I think some of that is to do with maybe this not being the right time to read it, or my stressing about this not being the right time to read it <laughs> might have damaged my reading experience of this book. And I can accept that and I can say that's my fault. But also what is not my fault, right, is that I believe nowadays to get a five star, there has to be a bit of magic, right? You have to be in, a, in the mood that clicks with the book. Something, if something's happening in your life that's like distracting or upsetting or makes you click with a book, like the, the context of what's going on in your life can really affect your reading of a book. I think a book, especially with four or five star, can really hinge on like everything falling into place to give everything a five star and for you to fall into that book and for it to be, I don't know, for that to be the moment that you read the book and to like connect with it, right? And there were just moments where I didn't feel as connected to this as Ninth House. But I have sworn to tell you 
that my dad, he said, I had to tell you, he's very upset with me. He like can't stop talking about it because he loves this. He prefers this to Ninth House and he just can't stop talking about how I haven't given this a five star. So he wants me to let you know that he's very upset with me. <laughs> No, I haven't given this a five star. And so am I, you know, I accept. Yeah, I don't know. In another day, this could have been a five star. But Ninth House, this series, I still think is incredible. I still think what Lee Bardugo is doing, this is incredible. And I'm still so excited to see the third one. It just was a four for me. It wasn't quite a five, but that's okay. You know what I mean? That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. Denial is a river in Egypt. Your husband <laughs> is gay. I really enjoy it. Now, that is my 100th book of the year. So shall we put that in on Goodreads so we get the confetti. <laughs> That's the whole reason I've done this video is just so we can watch the confetti together because that excites me. Okay, my books, update progress, finish the book, four stars. Confetti please. Yeah! <laughs> She's completed it! <laughs> So I did set my goal to 100 books this year. Oh, let me just screenshot her. How cute. What a moment. We've done it, guys. But maybe we'll do it again. Can I change my goal on here? I set it to 100 because I, I, I do better with positive reinforcement, right? I set my goal to 150 last year and I didn't reach it because whenever I was a couple books behind schedule, it stressed me out, right? But knowing now I've reached 100 books, I think I'm going to change it to 150, I've decided. I'm going to change it to 150 books. I reckon I'll be like a book or two behind. Let's change it to 150 and see what it says. Three books behind schedule. We can live with that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get to 150 books for the first time ever. Three books behind schedule we can live with. That's pretty much on schedule. I think I was like 20 books behind schedule by the end of like last year at a certain point, by this point. So three books. We're pretty much on schedule. So thank you guys for picking Hellbent because otherwise I think it would have taken me like 10 years to read it. And um, I'm really, I'm really happy that I read it. I really did enjoy it. And I think I will probably, but I think by the time the third books comes out, I'm gonna give that five stars. This was just a middle book flip. That sometimes happens, right? Um, and perhaps not everything quite falling in the, into place for us to be a five star. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got to the end, comment a bunny rabbit emoji down below if you got to the end. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in another one. And thank you again to Proven Skincare for sponsoring a portion of this video. Make sure you guys check them out down below. Use my code to get $20 off, which is so exciting. And yeah, I will see you soon. Bye.